Say what? Hey, mama. How can you talk that way to a dude whose life almost just got wasted? Well, listen, you're just real lucky that this car has good brakes or you would have been dead right now. Mm -hmm. That'd be real bad news, because I'd hate to leave this world without first getting the chance to know you. What do you say, Mama? You and me, we gots to get acquainted. Talk to me. Talk to me. I Wait a minute, what are you doing? Like it when you talk. Don't step Not one step that's close no to me. no way to talk to a highway buddy when you just saved my life. But all I'm trying, I just try, I'm trying to show you how grateful I am. What do you want? Don't know where to begin. Uh, the list is so long. Money. Money, yeah. That's I could use some finances. You you got the look of money. You got the smell of money. Yeah. Yeah. First, give me the money, mama. All right, here you are. This is all I have. Well, that's not enough to buy a sandwich. It's you all I have. Darn, you, something tells me you're not being honest with me. Something tells me maybe you got some more stashed in that luggage. There. Something, something tells me. And when something tells me, it usually is so. Why don't I just take a look for myself? There's nothing in the car. Get out of there, you stupid oh, pig. You sure got There's out. nothing in my luggage, you... Strange! Tough, don't you? Huh? All the women I've ever known, you've probably got the biggest... Ah, that's it. All right, all right, you can have it. <laughs> Damien, from the moment you see this man, you are going to understand why I had to arrange this meeting between you. Mrs. Saxon, now I really am very curious. Excuse me. Who in the hell are you? I can see that he had the same effect on you that he had on me. It's going to take you a minute to get over the shock, so let's get rid of the amenities first. This is Detective Damien Tyler of the Monticello Police Force. And this is... How do you do? You must be Skylar Whitney's twin brother. No. I am Skylar Whitney. Skylar Whitney is dead. I have no brother. Certainly no twin. I believe my aunt can vouch for that. She knew my parents. Gordon Whitney was my father's brother. We lived here in Monticello. If you have no twin brother, then how do you account for Well, I, I don't. Not yet, anyway. I admit that the idea of having had a twin brother occurred to me that my parents hadn't told me about, but I, I came to realize that was sheer fantasy. I have no living blood relatives. I'm afraid I don't understand this. Neither do I. The whole thing is absolutely incomprehensible. I think we'd better sit down. I'm afraid the only explanation I can offer you, Detective, is the same one that I gave Aunt Geraldine here. You refer to Mrs. Saxon as your aunt? Well, that's right, I do. You see, she is my aunt by marriage, although she doesn't believe that. No, I don't. I can't accept it, Damien. I knew the other man as my nephew for a long time. I lived with him in the Whitney house, day by day, for months. 
talked to him about the family history. Saw him function in the family business. Regarded him as my nephew. And that's all there was to it. He was Skylar Whitney to me, and I never doubted it. And I can see why you would doubt me. So can I. Yeah, my doubts are not the issue here. Even though I can't accept this story, Damien, I wanted you to hear it for a particular reason. I think you'll find it interesting, if nothing else. Mrs. Saxon, precisely what does this have to do with me? Let us say, for the sake of argument, that this man is who he says he is. The first question to follow, then, is who was the other man? The Scarlet Whitney who lies buried here in Monticello. Young man? See, I believe that that man was an imposter, someone who took my place in this world. Oh, really? Well, if that's true, where have you been all of this time? Well, I was lying half dead in a Swiss hospital. You see, I'd had a plane crash in the Alps. Oh. Well, what's your theory about this imposter's identity? I believe that he was a man that you knew. I believe that he was Jeff Brown. What? See, I met Jeff Brown when I was in Samaritz on vacation. He was a, well, I guess you'd call him a ski bum there. Well, I met him, we became friends, spent a lot of time together, traveled together, dated women together. There are two things I remember about him. He was always amusing and he was always broke. We rode together in my plane when we crashed into the Alps. And this is when each of you somehow became convinced that the other had been killed. Yes. But you see, Jeff, well, he came to life sooner than I did. He knew everything about me, of course, by then. He had access to all my private papers, my business documents, my journals, things of that nature. He did his homework well, then he came here to Monticello and took my life, my identity, and through plastic surgery, my appearance. Oh, come on, this is the most preposterous story I've ever heard in my life. I told you you'd find it incredible. Look, if it's true that you were in a hospital in Switzerland all this time, how did you know what had been going on here? Well, I had friends, friends who kept me apprised of what had been happening. Wait a minute. Did this Jefferson Brown ever mention a man named Fowler Wilcox to you? Mr. Wilcox was my father. No. No, not that I can remember. But then Jeff was very secretive about the people that he knew. See, he was fond of playing games. Uh, games involving uh, international intrigue, passwords, things of that sort. And that's what I thought they were, just that, games. As it turned out, I was not taking him seriously enough. You see, he enjoyed playing games all right, and the greatest game that he ever played was assuming my identity. I'm sorry, it's just too much to expect anybody to believe this kind of story. Yes. I am finding it difficult to get anyone to believe what I'm saying. So what I must do is to convince them that Jeff Brown was fraudulent. Now, if you know anything of him, Lieutenant, you must help me, please. I don't believe it. It's been two days since she disappeared and not a word about her. Or from her. I don't understand it. Why doesn't she call here? I'm the only person that she trusted in this house. Only because you told her so very often how trustworthy you are, Nora. She didn't call while I was out, did she? You'd tell me, wouldn't you? Of course I would. I understand how concerned you are. I have an idea that might help calm you down, though. Which is? Why don't you call the police? The Missing Persons Bureau? I understand they do wonders in finding missing persons. Very funny. You don't like the idea? That's too bad. You only have yourself to blame. Yourself and your boyfriend, Smiley Wilson. You should talk. You jumped into this deal fast enough once the door opened. You told me yourself you were in it for the money. I told you that because I knew it was the only reason you'd understand. Greed, you do understand that, all right, don't you? So there is another reason. I knew it. What are you up to? If I were you, nor I, I'd worry about your own problems. Yeah, my problems is that jerk Damien Tyler. It's his fault. If he didn't come back here, I'd be with her this minute. I have a feeling that Mrs. Whitney is going to have the last laugh on all of us. All my beautiful clothes, my makeup. Heavens, he didn't get my mink.
put that out of commission, and then there go all my profits. Sorry, Sid. You want to see the menu? You already asked me that. So I'm asking you for a third time. You want the menu? No. No thanks, really. I, I'm not hungry. <laughs> That's unusual. Not even coffee? Oh, no. No more coffee. I've had too much already. It keeps me awake. Hector, what do you come in here for? Hey, just hanging out, Sid. Great place you got here. You know, I hate to say this, but I get the idea that you are just using my place for a telephone booth. You jump every time the phone rings, and each time it's a different caller. You got some big mystery story, right? No, no mystery. I just know a lot of people, that's all. <laughs> well, you sure are popular. No menu, then. Sid. You don't really want me to order any food, do you? It'll just mean that I owe you more money than I do already. He broke, huh? What happened? You guys give up the idea of striking it rich? Oh, no. Not me, anyway. Excuse me. Hi there, Jim. Hi, Sid. Now, you look hungry. No, actually, I'm not. I just came by to see you. You got it. Hey, what's the matter? You're not talking to your colleague over there? Oh, yeah, sure. But I needed to talk to you first. Well, you have my complete attention. Well, I came by to give you this. It's $200. Yeah, I can see that. What for? It's $200 towards the 10000 that you loaned the theater company. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Jim, but... Uh... Honestly, this can wait, you know, whenever. Oh, that's real sweet, Sid, thanks. But it's not very much, I know, but I want you to know that I'm real serious about paying you back. I cleaned out the drama studio and sold all the equipment. Hey, Sid. Hi there, Calvin. Hi, Calvin. Jim. Sit down. Yeah, don't mind if I do. You want to see a menu? Well, maybe in a minute. Right now, I'd uh, like to speak to you, both of you, as a matter of fact. Hey. You sound so serious. You gotta have some big news flash. Well, I'm not sure it's all that, but it's not uh, the best piece of news in the world I could bring you either. Look, uh, remember that inquiry you asked me to make to the PD in Flint, Michigan, about the bank robbery a couple of years ago involving somebody named Smiley Wilson? Well, I made it. And? I got the police report back a little while ago. I'm afraid that uh, Smiley Wilson, the bank robber, and Smiley Wilson, the actor, are one and the same man. This comes as an awful blow to me, Calvin. I just can't believe that this is my... This... I mean, the Smiley Wilson we know. Are you sure this report's right? Look, there's no chance of any error. That is an official Flint PD report. It says he dressed up like a little old lady and passed one of those I got a gun notes to the bank teller. Yeah, well, he's real good at disguises. Yeah, well, it was good enough to work the first time. I'm afraid the second time, however, the little old lady got busted, got sentenced to five years, of which he served three. I just can't believe that this is Smiley Wilson. I mean... Seems like such a nice guy. Oh. They always do, Sid. They always do. No, no, no. I mean a really nice guy. Oh, God, he's a little crazy sometimes, but he could sure make you laugh. And anybody with a sense of humor like his can't be all bad. Honestly. I mean, I got to know him pretty well, you know, and there really is a good streak in him, too. Maybe the report is wrong, Calvin. Maybe you could check it out again, huh? Sid, come on. Sid, I already checked it out twice. I'm sorry, there's just no doubt about it. We all made a big mistake about Mr. Smiley Wilson. You sure as hell did. Sid, would you excuse me, please? Yeah, sir. Calvin just told me something real interesting about your brother. Oh, yeah? Like what? Has to do with his personal history. 
What'd he say? Why didn't you ever tell me he did time? Listen, Jim. You asked me once before if Smiley had ever been in trouble with the law, and I told you yes. Once, a long time ago. So don't act the surprised virgin like you didn't know. Smiley served his time, he paid his debt, and that should be the end of it. I don't see how bringing it up now and rehashing the past is going to make any difference whatsoever, so you just drop it and leave him alone. It has a lot to do with what's going on right now. I understand he's your brother and you got to protect him and all that. Hector, he hasn't changed. He was in this thing for the money from the very beginning. Don't you understand that? And what do you think you were in it for, huh? Were you just an innocent bystander? Oh, you turned pure white right in front of my eyes. Besides, we were going to use the money for the sake of the whole theater group. You believe that? Then you're a fool. What difference does it make now? Raven has the bonds and nobody has the vaguest idea where she is. Bonds? What bonds? Forget it. What bonds? She took some money out of the bank to live on, abroad. How much? You idiot, how much? About 20 million. Well, no wonder Smiley's after her. He'll do anything for that money. He'll even kill her. Oh, knock it off, Jim. I know my brother. He's not going to hurt her. I don't trust you anymore, Hector. I think you and Nora and Smiley are all in this together. Hector, telephone. It's for you. Yeah. Wait a minute, will you, Smiley? Calm down. I can't understand what you're saying. I'm saying she's a witch, Hector. She's a witch. She's got to be a witch of some kind. I can't believe it. She got away with her. What, what happened? What's wrong? I checked all of her luggage, and the bonds aren't there. Well, she's gone, and she's got the money with her. It's a real nice room. You should be comfortable here. It's just one thing. Yes. Guests without luggage got to pay in advance. Uh, okay. There. Oh, uh, that should do it. I'll say. <laughs> oh, uh, try not to use all the towels. We only change them every two days. Detective. Jefferson Brown worked for my father for a couple of years. He was a clerk in the State Department. Did you ever meet him? Well, I met him once, very briefly, but I'll never forget him or what he did to my father. See, my father had been a trusted servant of the State Department for many years. He was honest and professional. And then he was accused of stealing a very vital document or having lost it, which was just as damaging. The State Department began an investigation which seemed to implicate my father in some kind of fraudulent scheme. My father became so depressed over this incident and the fact that my mother had died just previous to this that he, uh, he chose to take his own life. Jefferson Brown very quietly disappeared. And you think Jeff Brown stole these documents? I know he stole those documents. I just haven't been able to prove it. I followed him for a couple of years, but I didn't have any luck. I, uh, I became convinced that Jefferson Brown was dead. He is. But he is not buried under his own name. I swear it. Good Lord. I don't know what's happening to me. But I think I'm beginning to believe you. see Nora. Sounds urgent. Yes, it's personal business. What are you doing here? Listen, uh, Spencer, excuse us for a moment. What's wrong? We lost her again. You did 
What? Now, just listen, will you? Could we sit down and talk? Okay. Now, Smiley wants to know everything you told her about the arrangements you made for her escape. Every detail. That's the only way we can trace her. And for heaven's sakes, please don't tell me you gave her a phony setup, because if you did, the whole thing is out the window. Of course I didn't. I gave her the name of a guy in New York who really does get people out of the country. I thought it'd be a good idea if she contacted somebody who really did and split for a while. So we'd have a chance to escape with the money. Smiley agreed. Okay, okay, well, come on, the name, who, where? Uh, a guy named Wolfie Thorne. He hangs out in a bar on East 9th Street called The Pirate's Den. <clears throat> Whitney residence. Yes, Mrs. Whitney. Nora, is it safe to talk? Perfectly safe. I am so glad to hear from you. I was very, very worried I'm about okay, you. Okay, I'm okay. Um, have the police been there? No, no, no one suspects you jump bail. You're really safe. But uh, listen, where are you exactly? Oh, I, I see. Yes. Mrs. Whitney, I cannot tell you how glad I am to hear from you. 